I have just always loved ink. ink. Like my love of ink precedes my wanting to be an ink maker. Um, for me, ink has a quality that you don't get from oil paint or pastels or um, markers or anything else because it, um, it both can draw a fine line and you give it a little bit of water and it has this sort of washy effect, you know? So it's got this kind of dual nature. It can both communicate, you know, using letter forms and stuff, and it can also um, be kind of poetic and dreamy. And I just, that, that combination makes it a winner for me. And I, I started out as an illustrator. Um, my first illustration ever was for the New York Times. I, I kind of lucked out in the illustration world. And uh, I found right from the beginning that in order to illustrate articles and ideas, I needed the hard lines of ink, and I also needed the washiness of ink. So I think it really was illustration that drew me to ink. The thing that drew me to natural ink was um, a black walnut tree. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I, I'm living in New York, um, working as an illustrator, doing some design work. I, I, I used to go to this place called Pearl Paint, which is this like uh, big art supply store in New York. It's, it's now gone, but it was like six floors of art supplies. You know, they just had every imaginable art supply. And uh, uh, it was down in, in Chinatown. And uh, I found on one of the floors this little bottle of black walnut ink. And I was like, well, that's amazing. There's a kind of ink that comes from a tree, basically, you know? I took the bottle of ink home, started painting with it, just lo you know, just loved the way it worked. Uh, skip ahead like five or six years, uh, my first kid was born and all of a sudden I'm like, you know, I'm looking at the back of all my art supplies and every single one of them mentions cancer or like possible toxicity or like, you know, wear a mask if you're, you know, and I was kind of like, well, this is crazy that art supplies should be toxic, you know, and uh, so I'm, I'm riding through the park on my bike and I see a, a little sign on a tree in the park and it says um, black walnut, like it's a black walnut tree. And this like little light bulb went off in my mind. I was like, oh yeah, that little bottle in New York that I, like I went through that whole bottle and uh, I was like, I, I too could make black walnut ink, you know? And uh, waited a couple months until all the little nuts had fallen to the ground, took them home, boiled them up and I made this beautiful, beautiful, like rich brown, almost to black uh, ink, and it was so it was so easy to make. It was so beautiful. It was just like that one that I used in that bottle. And I thought, like, I'm going into the business, you know. And uh, I, I got like an Instagram account, and I got a bank account, and I'm like, I'm I am the Toronto Ink Company, you know. Without really, I didn't even know what I was doing. Really, I just had a bag of black walnuts and an idea, you know, um, and. Uh, um, so, you know, from there I was like, okay, well, what else is, you know, non-toxic, plant-based, something I can find around me just at my feet? And, uh, you know, I got interested in sumac, which is a great, I love that, um, plant. Uh, I just started looking at the plants and weeds of the city and we're like, okay, what are the, you know, what are the traditional ways that colors have been made from these? How can I kind of, like, rejig those traditional ways? Uh, you know, year two or three, I started noticing like, like, hmm, like I wonder what I could do with that like rusty nail or what about that like bit of copper or, you know, I sort of, I sort of slightly went off to the side of like it has to be non-toxic and plant-based and I just uh, made the rule for myself that it has to be something that I, I can find at my feet, you know? Uh, and that led me to, you know, I'm, I'm very, very interested in the idea of plant-based, non-toxic inks that you can basically eat, you know? But I'm also just really interested in the idea of uh, inks that are based on a place, you know? Or an, even an idea, like an ink based on an idea, you know? Um, because what I discovered, by starting, by starting small, just with the black walnut, I, and, and sort of moving slowly, I discovered after a couple years that actually ink making is it's distillation like it's the like taking the things around you and intensifying them until they are in a little form like in a little bottle that you can use to 
well, as you say, have impact, you know? So, you know, I did an ink for Harley Davidson out of coffee. I did a uh, ink that went up to a icebreaker in, in the North Pole for an artist. I did, um, I found a couple who'd, uh, who'd been married and wanted for their anniversary to create an ink and I created it out of like the flowers of the garden that they had the marriage in. Like I just started thinking like, I can make ink out of anything, you know? Like it doesn't even, you know, it, like anything can be, can be made into ink. It's, it's, a, it's a distillation of color and place, you know? As skeptical as I am of the world of social media, you know, I wrote a book about making ink and I, you know, when the book came out, I was like, I guess I have to have a hashtag, you know? So I, I made the hashtag make ink, you know, that's the name of the book. So I was just like, okay, the hashtags make ink. And, you know, I was looking the other day and there probably are like 40,000 hits now on the hashtag make ink. And it's like, you know, there's a woman in Turkey who's working with kids, um, mostly kind of refugee kids, like in the hills outside of Istanbul, and she's taking the traditional colors that they're finding that, that have been used for various dyes and stuff, and she's turning them into both inks and um, coloring for making pasta, you know? And, and, and hashtag make ink, you know? And, and that's, I, I've, I've corresponded with her. Uh, she's now one of my collaborators, you know? There's, uh, it, it just goes on and on like this. Like there's, there are people all over the world that are kind of peeping up like, like groundhogs or something, just being like, yeah, I've been making ink for a long time, or I'm really interested in this idea of like, how could I make ink out of this, you know? And uh, um, it's, it's grassroots, like it's sort of literally grassroots, you know, there, there are people making ink out of grass. Um, uh, it is, um, it's using your hands rather than some giant sort of factory corporate version of color. It's democratic in the sense that like that, that thing that you were doing as a kid on the wall belongs to all of us, you know, like it is, de it's democratic, you know, and, um, and it's getting people in a dialogue with nature in a way that's not like, you know, it's not just like you go to the art supply store, you buy your, you know, oil paints and you sit there looking at nature and paint your painting. Like this is, you're actually using nature to speak and be in nature. You know, there's a foraging aspect. There's a, I don't know, people are using it for all kinds of stuff. Like I think it has a healing, I don't know if it's going to cause world peace, but there is a uniting factor that I'm seeing all over the place uh, with um, you know, place-based color. Number one message really is like, take a moment, you know, flip your phone upside down. <laughs> I'm not telling the people to throw out their phones, but just flip it upside down, like walk out the door, open your eyes and all of your senses to the color that's like right there, you know, like it's just all around us and um, it kind of belongs to all of us, you know, so I think like, you know, if I could have, if the film could have an effect, it would be like, I think I want to blow people's minds kind of, you know, like I think there's a beauty there that's just kind of, um, it doesn't belong to me, you know what I mean? Like I'm not, like people are like, oh yeah, you're the ink guy, but I'm kind of like, well, like, the ink guy is that, that octopus from however many millions of years ago, you know? Like, it's, it's been going on for a long, long time. It does belong to everybody. And um, yeah, I think if, if there's a kind of profound message in there somewhere, it is about um, the importance of using your senses, using your hands, being in a kind of relation to the stuff of the world that we're all in, you know? Um, that feels, that feels really, really important. I, I think, um, in a way, I also kind of want there not to be any message at all. Like, I kind of just want people to see the film and, and kind of have their own whatever crazy experience it is, you know? Like, it is kind of a wild, 
There's something wild about the journey that happened in that film, and I kind of just want people to immerse themselves in that wildness and then have their own sense of adventure that, that comes out of that, you know?